Welcome to Stuff You Missed in History Class, a production of iHeartRadio. Happy Friday, I'm Tracy V. Wilson. And I'm Holly Fry. This was unearthed time. Sure was. Yeah. Um, As I was planning out the calendar of when to do this, normally what I have started trying to do is um, when the quarter ends, the first recording session we have after the end of that quarter is when we record Unearthed. That made the timing a little bit awkward because we record the podcast in most cases on Tuesday, uh, which meant that the last day of the quarter was the day prior to (laughs) to recording, uh, which did not leave a lot of time for the last few days of the month to look at stuff. It just feels like, to me, it winds up coming out way late in the month if we don't schedule it that way. And so this morning, after I had already, like I had written the whole outline, I had sent it to you, I had done all of that this morning, I was like, I should probably make sure that nothing really monumental happened yesterday afternoon. (laughs) that I need to wedge in here. Nothing came up in all of my various feeds uh, that needed to be discussed after having already written the episode. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. I like that there's always more Voynich Manuscript. Yes. I really liked that there was Voynich Manuscript that was, again, I think this is the second time fairly recently that we've had some kind of something that was not about someone's attempt to decode it, that was, but was about, like, other stuff. Yeah, studying it in other ways. Yeah, because there's other stuff that is, uh, that is great also to just, you know, learn about the actual document and the actual object uh, and all of that. Yeah, it's very cool. Um... I mean, uh, you know, we're all fascinated with it. We'll never stop being fascinated with it. We cannot help it. Yeah. I can't help it. I love it. Yeah. Um, I still want to make, and have never done it, even though I've threatened for years now, to make a fabric print using some of the imagery from it, because I think it would be cool to make a dress. That would be cool to make a dress. It'll happen. It just might take a minute. Yeah. This might take a minute. <laughs> One of the things that kind of tickled me, it... Uh, I was thinking about it when we were talking about some of the art pieces that just kind of vanish from the historical record. Mm -hmm. And, you know, on Criminalia, we did a a season of art heists, Mm -hmm. which were in themselves illuminating because we discovered in our research how often it was super easy to just take something off a wall and walk because... Oh, yeah. The alarms didn't exist or did exist but weren't functioning and they hadn't fixed them. Or they worked just fine and nobody regularly turned them on. Like, there are so many right. instances of that. Yeah. I think nowadays it's different. But, like, in the throughout the 20th century, shockingly late in the game, that was still happening. But also how often, you know, we talk about art going missing in terms of an art heist. But there are so many instances historically where art didn't get stolen, it just kind of like somebody dropped the ball in tracking yeah. it. And I I marvel at how many pieces are floating around in the world that were like, we know this guy painted more stuff. Right. Nobody seems to think it got stolen, but we don't know where it is. Yeah. There, and there's also a lot of art that like isn't by a famous artist mm-hmm. that's passed down through, you know, family collections uh, folks might think of it as, you know, just a family heirloom or just a painting that they heard that their great-grandparents bought when they were in yeah. uh, Ireland or whatever um, that aren't necessarily something that someone would keep up with. Um, and especially as, you know, over the last few decades, there have been efforts to learn more about uh, artists who were overlooked, like women artists who didn't necessarily make a huge name for themselves, uh, but somebody has realized, oh, this person's work was actually really influential in their artistic community, and we didn't realize, and it becomes time to try to, like, trace their surviving artwork. It's like, oh, we never cataloged that. (laughs) Yeah, it was never in a catalog. It was never in a museum. It was something that maybe, you know, the artist sold to make enough money to buy their groceries that week or whatever. I also just think, you know, whatever art that you like, that's great. Yeah, for sure. There's that art assessment valuation of art. Uh-huh. 
Which puts a price tag on things. Yeah. Which is fine. I guess. But, like, <laughs> I, I'm with you. Like, it's, to me, the greater value is, like, someone's emotional response or attachment to a piece of art. Yeah. Which is hard to monetize, so I understand why nobody's interested in it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but it does fascinate me how much art has been sitting in places. Right. Lost. I mean, there are still art pieces you know, that we know, for example, were taken that haven't been recovered. And I always wonder, like, in some cases, they probably are gone forever. Right. Like, they got trashed. Like, there's a, a dolly that was on Rikers Island and got stolen, and that probably got trashed by the people that stole it. Yeah. But there are also cases where, like, I mean, if you think about why would you steal art in the first place— it's presumably to sell it. Mm -hmm. And that means there are private collectors that just want it. They don't want anybody to know they have it. They just want it. And I Mm -hmm. wonder how many things are sitting in someone's private little gallery that Mm -hmm. we hope one day are recovered so other people can see that beautiful art. Yeah. I have not looked up the latest, latest on the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum heist Uh, We have had some updates about the case over the years. Yeah. Uh, But one of the fears with that is that, like, at this point, those artworks are just gone. Mm -hmm. Um, We don't know for sure that they're just gone. But, like, it is a possibility that the works were stolen. People realized, oh, I can't actually sell this because, oops, there's a gigantic news story about these missing paintings. Right. And so then what happens? Yeah. Yeah. Wild. Uh, Wild. Every time we say Auntie Kithra now, I think of Mads Mikkelsen saying Auntie Kithra, and I just, I don't, I'm in my own head at that point. I'm gone. I'm on a lost little tangent where I'm just thinking about Indiana Jones movies. Yeah, I can't remember if I have talked about playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey and every single proper name that we've ever said on the show uh, is pronounced much differently in that video game because a lot of it is like more of a, a like a Greek influenced pronunciation. Right. And uh, so when I was playing that game, there would be times when I would just, my brain would kind of reset for a second because I would hear a voice actor from the video game say a name 100% different than I, differently than I have ever said it or heard it said, uh, which was always funny to me. <laughs> um, I was particularly delighted by the image of using a tennis ball on a stick <laughs> to apply a cleaning solution to a cannon. It's pretty good. Tennis balls on sticks are very important. Yeah. You can use them to train animals. Uh-huh. You can use them to, you know, keep your walker from sticking on things. And you can use them to clean cannons. <laughs> I was going to say you can use them to give somebody something to look at when they're recording on a green screen. Also great. Also yeah. great. So Lots many options. Lots of options for the tennis balls on sticks. Shout out to the tennis balls on sticks, the unsung heroes of humanity. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I am not completely sure if they figured out uh, exactly what the mechanism was on, like, the prior chemicals that had been used and the exact chemical composition of the cannon. There comes a point in these, in Unearthed episodes, where, like, I I have to stop getting further detail or I will be out of time. Right. Uh, and... In this particular case, I had a commitment that required me to leave my desk at a specific time. So I did not have, there was no wiggle room to be like, oh, if I spend half an hour extra trying to figure out some backstory on this, I'll just work a little, like, no, that was not an option. (laughs) I had to be like, stop reading about the tennis ball. But it's so fun. And then my question is like, how do you know there's nothing harmful in the finish of the tennis ball? Yeah, I don't know how that how that was arrived at is like the best way to do it. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, as always, I also have a gigantic list of things that were maybe, maybe we might talk about, but there was not enough time for them. 
Coin hordes, your favorite. Yeah, I no no coin hordes. <laughs> I did think of you recently when I uh, ran to London for a brief trip and we went to the British Museum and there are lots of coin hoard displays. And I was oh, yeah. like, it's Tracy's nightmare. <laughs> yeah, no, no coin hoards. Um, so some of the things that we talked about are things that were auctioned. That was part of what we discussed. But there were a lot of uh, reports were like the only thing that was really notable was that this thing was being auctioned off. Um, it wasn't a thing that had been found unexpectedly or something. It was like this thing is is up for auction, uh, and I I did not find that as interesting as this thing was found in someone's attic and then it was auctioned. A couple of them were headlines about things that had been discovered on Antiques Roadshow to be something notable. And um, I originally had one on, uh, I think, maybe the artwork list. And then I sort of was like, this is really the whole point of Antiques Roadshow, though. (laughs) Um, I only watch that show typically if I'm visiting my parents. But, uh, like, that's sort of part of the whole idea of Antiques Roadshow. So I also did not include any of the Antiques Roadshow headlines. I mean, it is the idea, but how often do they actually find, like... Something really, We talked really about impressive. one recently, right? Uh, that was like a missing painting um, uh-huh. by Richard Dad. Is that right? Um, but I, I mean, I do think like it, it still has merit because they don't often go, oh gosh, this yeah. is a, a painting of a master that's been missing for 200 years. <laughs> yes. I also had two headlines that we did not wind up talking about. Uh, because there were people who damaged things. One, somebody who wet down some cave art so that it would look better in a picture they were taking. And the other, somebody who um, uh, carved uh, his initials into a wall at Pompeii. And I would just like to say, please don't do that. Please do not wet down cave art. Please do not Please do not deface things. I know there's plenty of graffiti already at Pompeii that is from hundreds or thousands of years ago. We don't need to add additional to that. It's weird, right? There's that strange impulsive thing that people just step outside of, like, context and think, Uh I want to do this thing. I'm going to do this. They're not even thinking it. They're just doing it. It's bypassing (laughs) any kind of, like... Uh, reasoning going on in their prefrontal cortex. They're just, it's like their hand is reaching out and they're already doing it. And I wish there were a way to stop that. (laughs) That did also happen with a child in one of the, uh, like an actual small child who knocked over something. Prefrontal cortex not done yet. Not done. Still cooking. Like a small child. So anyway, um, if you're an adult person, just just don't, don't deface the artwork. Don't knock down uh, don't knock down cool rock formations. Like, just don't. Just don't do any of that. Don't eat bog butter. Don't eat the bog butter. Um, Unless you're a trained scientist who presumably has help standing by in case something goes awry. Uh, and hopefully access to good medical care in case there's some microbes in there that are a problem. Yeah. I mean, the whole point is the bog helps preserve the butter, but still, uh, that's a long time. <laughs> so anyway... Whatever's happening on your weekend, uh, I hope it's a lot of fun. Maybe you've got some cool museum stuff on your radar. Whatever it is, I hope it's great. We will be back with a Saturday Classic tomorrow, and we will be back with something brand new on Monday. Stuff You Missed in History Class is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows.